this game ends up going the distance here simply because Welcome to Secret Spring, ladies and gentlemen, we're spawning in the right-hand position. Currently has no lives left and has to beat the game on a single credit, ladies and gentlemen. Poor Sam has... he basically is down to his last quarter in the arcade. So can we see him pull off something truly epic here on the hot seat? Representing my insanity, it's Kane. His opponent spawning in the bottom left hand position as the blue Terran player representing Team Liquid.net. Currently 4 0 up and one more win away from getting to a maximum prize pool on the hot seat next week. Ladies and gentlemen, your current incumbent, it's Bunny. And I have to say right now, Bunny is absolutely d -d 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 dominating this series. Um, we've had four games where Bunny's first meaningful attack of the game has shut Kane down. A very, very surprising result, just considering how strong Kane has been recently. Sure, Bunny might have gotten further in WCS and stuff like that, but Kane... Kane was up there on stage showing us some brilliant games as well, and he hasn't really been able to do that today. So is this going to be the moment where he turns it around? We have the spawning pool first, followed by the hatchery uh, on this map. Very, very strange map with only one major attack route through the middle here. Can often be very, very difficult and unpredictable for players to find what each other's strategies are. Bunny is going to be going for that Reaper again. And Kane just moving back to see what's going on. He will see that the barracks is actually... Uh, is actually producing something. He wants to confirm whether it's going to be a Reaper or a Marine. So he's going to do that just by leaving it here, because of course a Marine will be hitting it. And he will be able to spot that it is a Reaper and that it's popping out now. So there we go. It'll go straight underneath the second Overlord here as well. In case Kane needed a little bit of additional confirmation, knows that the Reaper is now incoming. Now, there's an awful lot of uh, cliff space here on Secret Spring. It's a really, really good map for Reapers, and a really frustrating map to have to deal with in the early game. So let's see how Kane deals with this challenge here. Bunny at the moment trying to reposition the Reaper to see if he can sneak in, perhaps, uh, to the natural expansion. Instead, will be able to do that. The hatchery only now just completing, but Kane has no drones there as yet, and he will be able to get a queen instantaneously back. He's now behind the mineral line trying to pick off a single worker. Won't be able to do so at the moment. Great target firing. He doesn't quite have enough time to make this actually work, though. We have a second Reaper, so Tim and Bob are going to be reunited here inside the Zerg base. It looks like the second, no, isn't going to be going straight into the natural. Uh, do we have a queen popping here? Well, we certainly have another one in production, let's put it that way. So that'll be the third queen of the game, and the fourth queen is actually queued up in the main base already. Behind this, we have the command center, uh, third command center, only just getting put down at the 5 minute 10 second mark. And we've also got the factory about to complete as well for Bunny. Uh, one of those Reapers, not quite getting close to the end of its lifespan, but very, very nearly getting into a position where it might be in a bit of trouble. And Kane right now, well, he's going to be taking those two gases at his natural. He hasn't been uh, scouted as far as that is concerned yet from Bunny. I have to say, so far Kane's defending this well. He's anticipated where the Reapers are going to be really well. He's been uh, holding back with his Queens, making sure he uh, covers off his base as much as he can. And as a result, you know, as a reward for this, no workers have been killed with this opening from Bunny so far. What's he making behind this, though? Whoopsie daisy, a little bit of a rally point problem with those uh, Hellions not being able to get out of the base. That could affect him a little bit. More Reapers and more Hellions coming in, though. And uh, could we potentially see an armory pop down if Bunny wants to try and turn in the screw here on Secret Spring? It is a possibility. The Queen's now trying to defend the ramp. They're getting actually very, very, very far out to where their creep is. And that's just so they can lay these two creep troopers down by the looks of things. And we have three Reapers and two Hellions, soon to be four. Now seeing if they can march their way into the Zerg base. And oh, one of those queens is getting very low. And we have one transfuse available. It gets used very cost effectively indeed. But it is now 
getting focused down. A queen is going to die. We have a spine crawler though, and there's only the one short ramp, by the way, coming into the main base. So yes, the Reapers can be problematic, but these uh, spine crawlers will help ensure that it's very difficult for Hellions to actually make their way around as well. And ooh! I'm not sure about moving the queens out that far, and it looks like, yeah, one of them is going to go down indeed. Oh, don't attack your own creep, Shuma, mate. It's all right. That didn't kill your friend. And the Reapers are now coming in to try and get some damage done. Oh, picks off one of them with these Zerglings. Really good play now from Kane. He's holding on uh, to making sure there's no damage that can be done through this early game harassment. He's up to 44 workers versus 34. The layer is about to be complete. The Bane Lance is half complete as well. But I, I really wonder if Kane is moving out just a little bit too far with these Queens. He's trying to bait the units into the spine crawler, but he's getting so low when he does it. And, wow. Well, it looks like he's going to be able to beat Bunny back. And he did only lose the one queen. And he's now starting to spread creep uh, below his ramp. Maybe, I guess, in this position, you just have to be that aggressive if you happen to be in Kane's position. And we have the Spire being snuck down next to this extractor here inside the main base while we have these speedlings moving out across the map to see what kind of damage they can do. The wall is down, but there are Hellions here. Hellions can be dangerous. And it doesn't look like Kane is going to try and move in. He's keeping an eye on the timing for the third base. I really like that. Uh, he's taken his own third as well. Which, by the way, is quite far from the natural. But he's doing a good job of spreading that creep preemptively. And we can now see that there are four Hellions incoming through the middle of the map. Are we going to try and see an attempted flank by the Zerglings here in the middle? I'm not sure. The Zergling needs to stop. Oh, it doesn't quite stop, unfortunately, the command center from landing. But it will be annoying enough to have a few units go over there and see if we can't sort them out. So three Marines versus two Zerglings. Generally, a fight the Terran is very, very happy to take all day, every day. But now, for the first time, we get to see a position where Kane has more than three Mutalists on the field. Because I believe we're casting our minds back all the way to game number one here, guys. Where Kane got two, the first two Mutas out as he GG'd. So, uh, it's, it's been a rough ride getting into the mid-game so far this series for Kane. And, uh, well, win, lose, or draw. In this game five, at least he's doing a much better job of that. His creep spread is actually pretty spot on as well. And these Hellions, they're doing very little other than just trying to deny creep spread. But Bunny now, he's going for a double drop. And a very similar, uh, I suppose, in idea to game number one. He's going to be meeting up with these Hellions. Here come the Mutalists. And the Marines say, oh no. And that was a slow reaction from Kane. Losing two out of five of the Mutalists. But that's okay. He's got, <laughs> he's got more on the way. And Zerklings and Banelings coming by. Pardon me for the coughing there. Trying to recover from Millens. And actually doing a good job getting a few decent Baneling connects. Let's take a look at what the resources lost tab is like. He's evened that out quite nicely indeed. So this attack from Bunny initially getting fended off very well from Kane there. We've got a counterattack going in towards a third base location. Here come the Zerglings. There is indeed a full bunker, but the Zerglings get a partial surround. The Mutas are going to be able to come and help with that as well. The bunker goes down before any repair can take place. There are lots of Marines actually moving in at this point and no Banelings. Oh, the Banelings actually, they are lagging behind a bit and a Widow Mine is able to take care of them. So the third base will survive both players having their attacks repelled here in the middle game on Secret Spring. And these mutas, they're dicing with death, man. Only four of them. We need to try and get their numbers up. Not a good position to be in right now. Uh, if you just have four mutas and you're trying to engage marines. And oh dear, he's cornered these zerglings. There's not much Kane can do. He's just going to have to try and run past. And that's exactly what he gives it a go. Uh, is he going to run past into the third? I don't think that's going to work though. Because the bunker is back up. There are a decent number of marines here. At least he bypasses the widow mines. Can he kill off any workers? Yes, he can. A couple of workers going down there. Uh, no additional activity elsewhere on the map coming out from Bunny right now, which means workers killed, well, 3-0. to zero. It's definitely a non-zero uh, amount of losses. And we have scans to check for a fourth base, by the way. That's exactly what Bunny's doing right now. He's going, okay, I'm not doing too much aggressively, but are you really economically ahead? And oh my god! And that's a third mutal lost, unfortunately, without engaging in this game. Kane has to be so, so careful. I really wouldn't be laying creep tumors there right now if I were you, buddy. And, well, there goes that queen. And the spine crawler does at least slow uh, the rate of assault here, because at the end of the day, you can't just target the creep tumors if the spine crawlers are constantly hitting you. So I guess that's a thing. 
In the meantime, Kane is thinking about attacking over on the left-hand side. We're transitioning, by the way, into, uh, well, definitely Biomech. There are too many barracks for this to be considered a transition to mech. And, we, of course, we have those Engineering Bay 2-2 upgrades as well. But we have Thors to complement the Marines here to try and kill off the Mutalists as quickly as possible. Both sides taking down destructible debris uh, to make sure that their units can get to the front lines as quickly as possible. And, well, we, we might end up in, a, in a, almost a split map situation. The drop gets spotted. The drop definitely gets spotted. And, well, we actually need to kill off all those Widow Mines before they're able to borrow. Good job. All four Widow Mines going down. They're really, really nice micro there from Kane. The medevac is going to go down as well, but now he has to go back home. He doesn't want to be engaging selectively with this. Uh, ooh, those two Widow Mines are actually not getting shots off, so that's fine. So they're not, uh, not needing to reload right now, but... Unfortunately, two of them are on such low hit points that I, I think uh, I think Bunny's just going to go home and defend right now. He's at 193 to 178 supply. Both sides are going to be maxed out very, very soon. The upgrade advantage slightly falls in Bunny's favor. But Kane is, uh, well, he's experiencing a degree of comfort that he hasn't had so far in this series. But he needs to start thinking about a fourth and fifth base at some point soon. And which side he intends on taking that on. From the creep spread, it looks like he's intending to take this one. And uh, perhaps that's the reason why Bunny is now moving out across the top portion of the map to see if he can't take game number five this way. Kane, in the meantime, is going for aggro through the center. It doesn't look like there are any Widow Mines and stuff there. Oh, but he sees the Assault coming on to creep down in the north side and has decided he's going to come back and defend it. Doesn't really want to get into a base trading situation. Small number of units going to initially engage. A half-decent first bailing hit, but otherwise that's about it to report. And now we have the real fight. A lot of Zerglings coming in. Good amount of bailing damage. Detonations, pickups on the Thor. Not going to be enough to micro that back. More Bailings coming in from the back now. And the spread from Bunny is good. But the sheer numbers from our Zerg player are just too much. Kane currently 152 versus 141 supply. But he is only just taking his fourth base now. And the fifth base is coming down for... Uh, sorry, the fourth base is complete, rather, for Bunny. Just not yet an orbital command. So... Is that a problem for our team, Liquid Terran? Oh, these Bailings, these ba... Okay, those are pretty wasted, I'm not going to lie. Pretty wasted. Go home, Banelings. You're drunk. And oh my god. Oh my god, that's a lot of Banelings. I think we're going to see a big engagement here. Uh, the Planetary Forge is about a third of the way complete. What is Kane going to be doing with this? He needs to maximize the advantage he can get with his Zerglings so he can focus on making sure the Banelings hit everything that's a nice, juicy, solid target for him. But I think that timing is now starting to disappear. Number of Mutalists on the field right now, guys, is 20 and counting. That's a respectable number and potentially could get even higher. But we are instead going to be seeing the transition to the Ultralist Cavern from my insanity's Kane. So we've got the uh, plus three, plus three on the way as well. And no doubt we'll be seeing some Carapace very, very shortly. All right, so where else are we looking on this map right now? Well, the middle of the map is starting to get creeped up. That's just really, really good. Kane with this Mutalisk, I, I guess we can call it a hit squad. There are four missile turrets that are in the natural expansion. Bunny absolutely does not want him to ever go in there. Oh, and he's found the engineering base. One of them is going to get taken out. He actually has a, uh, a goop up on the second one as well, so he can take some time out to kill off these Marines before potentially coming back. But... These, wow, we can see how much this upgrade actually means to Bunny. He needs the plus three attack there. The plus three armor is gone, but after the gooping completes, I think we are going to see that complete. Unfortunately, this Thor will be able to chase the Mutalist away. And, uh, well, right now, Kane not having the best time, but uh, doing his best to try and squeeze one back in this particular series. Bunny, though, with the counter aggression, he's saying, fine, maybe I'm not taking your Mutalist on. Maybe I'm just trying to take on your bases right now. And this could actually be a very, very sensible approach for him to take. We see him moving back towards this space. This hatchery is almost certainly going to go down. But hold on a second. That's a massive pink over here on the left-hand side of the screen. This hatchery is now uh, ticking against time. We can see the workers trying to escape. But it looks like all of them except Hero Drone. Oh, no. Hero Drone is very, very dead, guys. So don't worry about Hero Drone. Is going to go down. These mules continuing to do an awful lot of damage. Clearing a mineral line there. 22 to 26 workers killed so far this game. Both sides are maxed out at 200-200. 140 versus 148 army supply. 55 versus 52 
worker supply. This is pretty darn close, but we have the extra plus three upgrade. Don't forget for Liquid Bunny right now, but he is fighting on Creep as well, and there are Ultralis out on the field. Here comes Kane. A couple of wasted bailing detonations, not the best one to start things off with, but the Marine spread actually behind this isn't the greatest, and the bailings are going to soon be able to get some good connections if he's not careful. And these, all right, these Marines are going to have to get picked up and move on home. Kane did a good job defending that. And well, right, wow, that's a lot of, uh, <laughs> that's a lot of Widow Mines in the Mineral Line, guys. So, uh, you can obviously tell that Bunny is very, very serious about not trying to get harassed by these Zergs. Scanning once more to check that the 11 o'clock base hasn't been retaken by Kane. If we take a look at the income at the moment, uh, looks like, uh, well, looks like Bunny marginally outmining Kane. Of course, uh, having those mules, very, very helpful as well. And uh, here we go. So once again, over here on the right-hand side, we have a fourth base being taken. Let's see if Kane can keep a hold of it this time, because right now, we actually have four bases up for Buddy, and the fifth base is on its way. So as this game continues to go forward, we're going to be seeing some small incremental benefits to Buddy's game here that Kane hasn't been able to realize yet. And that's pretty big right now, to be perfectly honest. So, uh, let's see what goes on. Medevac coming up via the top of the map. Overlord will excellently be placed to spot that. Let's go ahead and just confirm by checking Kane's vision here. Really, really nicely played. Sees the drop. And we have a bit of an attack with the Mutalist by the looks of things inside the main base. He's got a magic box that Thor. And uh, not quite able to get the damage you want to get done uh, on those Mutalists. Picking up a Supply Depot as well. That actually has had a Supply Drop associated with it too. And Bunny's going to be counterattacking by the bottom right-hand side. So these Bio units now 3-3 looking extremely menacing. Going to try and march their way into this base and prevent it from going up yet again. We have Infestors coming out, but... Need to be very, very careful with that. Now, technically, you could fungal all the medevacs until they die. I don't know how good an advantage that's going to end up being, though, as the Ultra is really tanking the brunt of this force over here in the 4 o'clock position. In the meantime, the meter's still continuing to do damage, uh, trying to camp out the production structures and do as much as they can. More and more Marines are just coming out for Bunny, but ineffectively, just in 1s or 2s, the Mutas are actually doing a good job of killing them off. So... Is this attack going anywhere? It doesn't... To be honest, I don't think it should. Uh, I think uh, I think Kane is more than enough to defend this. But I've said things like that before and then casually watches it as a drop completely tears apart an opponent. So I'm a little bit skeptical here. We have a drop now inside uh, inside the base next to the Ultralist Cavern where it looks like the spawning pool is actually going to go down. That could end up being a very, very big deal indeed. There is the pool. Um, so we're going to have to see a new one. So ladies and gents, there you go. That's your standard 25-minute pool in this game. And K now, well, at least he's able to clear that out. The Ultralist Cavern does still stand. But it looks like we're going to be taking the gold. We're going up to the gold for the fifth base now from Liquid Bunny. And Kane at the moment still stuck on four. So, uh, Bunny's still trying to squeeze out a uh, longer-term macro advantage. Both sides now on 3-3 as well. Uh, in Kane's case, it's the melee. So his Ultralists are just incredibly strong. And uh, Bunny, in the meantime, just sticking with that pure bio for now. Continuing to pump out those medevacs that are so, so important for the long-term health of his army. And another scan to check for creep tumors and potentially a base over in the 11 o'clock position. And it looks like Kane might have had enough. Uh, I mean, that that's a massive swarm of Zerg units right there. But what is it going to attack and when is really the question right now. We've got the Great Aspire transition coming in here. Very, very interesting indeed. So we could be seeing Corruptor Broodlord coming out from Kane. Let's see how he wishes to play against this kind of Terran style here in the hot seat. Best of nine. So the gold base has been staked out by the Terran player. I feel like Kane is on a little bit of a race against time now. Because if we take a look at the minerals mined, I'm fairly certain that just says uh, that Bunny is comfortably uh, out mining Kane right now. We have a bit of an attack going here in the southern location. Looks like some lings were basically sacrificed to kill off as many add-ons as possible. But here comes the rest of the army. We're actually not waiting at all. An awful lot of Ultralis and some Infestors as well. Um, 
Is this going to be enough for some great fungals? No. First good fungal misses. Second one lands. Gets the money. And those are some very, very good connections there. And Bunny currently falling to 130 supply. Look at how many ultras are still left on the field for Kane. Is this going to be the push that wins him his first game of the series? But unfortunately, these uh, units are able to kite away. And they're going to be kiting away into the planetary fortress there. More and more damage continue to be done for Lynx and Mutas inside the main base. Bunny really needs a way to regroup and recollect right now. Ultras combined with Brutal are just such a frustrating combination to deal with because you never know what the Zerg player is building next. You want to be able to prepare accordingly and you can't. Uh, so it looks like the goal base is being entirely left alone from Kane as he goes back home, although I'm not 100% certain why. We definitely needed some more uh, fungals and infestors in that campaign. If he wanted to be in a situation uh, where he could immobilize everything that Bunny had. He had some really great moments and uh, traded quite cost effectively, I think. But wasn't able to deliver a blow that's the equivalent of like a knockout punch or something like that. Okay, now 167, uh, 157 rather, supply versus 116. And uh, well, we're continuing to have creep tumors land all over the place here. But we're still looking for that killing blow in game number five. Well, more Marines, Marauders, and Thors coming out from Bunny. I can't say it's anything out of the ordinary. In the meantime, the aggression definitely shifting the Zerg's way now as Kane moves up the ramp and tries to infiltrate the base here. He's got a decent number of Ultralis. He's camping out the barracks right now. And it looks like Kane is going to be able to overrun this location. I don't really see too much at the moment uh, that Bunny can do about that. There are lots of barracks. He'll probably need to remake those, but he's got income from the gold base. Let's see if he uh, actually is. And, oh, pardon me for the scroll going a little bit berserk there. And now we have Kane going towards the third base location. So the Ultralisk got a little bit too fat to fit side by side through those buildings, but he's absolutely going to town everything else. And, oh my god, those fungal growths were actually sick. And that might be it. GG. So, ladies and gents, it's not going to be a whitewash. My Insanity's Kane begins the fight back. And game number five will go in the Zerg player's favor.